all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you all back to the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2021. Thank you so much for being with me today and each day on this journey. Our tangle for today is going to be hemp. There are four or five different deconstructors for this pattern on Tangle Patterns, and you should go check them all out. That means there are multiple ways to draw this. Uh, the original hemp pattern was done by Sandy uh, Bartholomew, CZT, and but there are three others, I think 3Y by Jenny Liu, and um, but anyway, go ahead and go check that out. And down at the bottom, there is a kitchen take, okay, <laughs> a kitchen table tangle with Maria drawing hemp as a reticulum. And then what she did in that video, that's what we're going to do today. Okay. So you might want to check that out. It was very cool. I always am inspired by watching Maria draw. Okay. Before we get started, and Simba has decided to uh, join me. He needs some up close and personal time. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of things. Okay, so I got a gift in the mail uh, from Barbara, and uh, she sent me a set of these erasable, retractable um, ballpoint, basically, they're ballpoint pens, right? Uh, it just clicks up, and it's got an eraser on the end, and it's gel ink, right? It says it's fine, I'm guessing from the nib size it's about a 05 is what I'm guessing, at least comparatively to the microns. That's my guess. And I wanted to share this uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a very smooth, a very smooth draw. It's not particularly good with variable line weight. You can flick, but you don't have a lot of control. But my point here being that this pen would be absolutely great for drawing if that's what you can afford. And uh, this one came with black, blue, and red, so you probably don't have a huge range of colors, but if that's what you want to do, then that's a perfectly viable alternative to the Micron. Now, that said, there is a reason why we use the pens that we use, and this is one of them. Gel ink is water-soluble. So the minute it gets wet, your ink strokes are gone, right? Now, this is something you can use to your advantage, but it's also a reason why that's not our first choice uh, for uh, a Zentangle ink experience. However, for beginners, if this is what you can afford and this is what you have, use it. Absolutely use it. And I really wanna thank you, Barbara, for um, putting me onto those. Uh, because I think I may find several ways that I can use them in my art. So thank you very much. The other thing I wanted to show you before we get started, uh, this is a picture of hemp uh, shaded in a couple of different ways. Okay, this is the pattern we're going to do today, but not the way we're going to do it. And I did this video earlier today um, and had to redo it because I, I drew the pattern wrong. And in that video, this was the result that I ended up with. And I wanted to point this out because mistakes are opportunities. This is not the way today's tile turns out, but it's still a very lovely tile. Now, um, this was drawn with a brown PN. Okay, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at today's tile, right? This is today's tile. I forgot one step on this, and this was the difference. 
Yeah. Pretty interesting, right? So mistakes don't always have to be negative, guys. Okay, I'm hiding this again. Uh, but no, actually, I did want to show you also the comparison. This is using pencil, um, um, graphite pencil as the shading element, uh, although I did put some brown um, chalk pencil over that. And, um, but otherwise, I handled these two the same, dot of jelly roll, you know, all of that. Uh, this one I used uh, the brown, um, I only used the brown chalk pencil to, to shade with and didn't use graphite at all. And look at the difference in, in the color hues. Uh, is that the right word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Um, this is much darker, much uh, grayer, much, um, it's, it's very much a different, a different thing than this one right here. Um, which is much more uh, lighter, much lighter, uh, more brown. Uh, this is more black and gray. This is more brown and gold. Uh, so it's really up to you. But I wanted to point out the difference in ink uh, makes a difference in the total project. And that doesn't mean that one is better than the other. Not at all. But uh, knowing how they're going to react with your paper is important too. Okay, so let's get started with today's video. Simba left us. He, he, was, he was frustrated. All right, guys. Today is going to be box back day. I am tangling on the back of my cereal box. Look at that. Nice tan uh, color, all ready to go. All right. So I am going to be using probably my brown 01 and my brown PN today. I am also reserving the right to use my General's, um, my General's uh, chalk pastels. And uh, I will most certainly be using my, my General's charcoal white. Okay. All right, let's get started. Now, it's going to be really difficult for you guys to see the pencil today. So, I'm really going to try hard. In Maria's example, she has got her, she has pulled her dots in from the corners a little bit and makes her space. Makes her space. Maria's checking out my camera angle here. Just, uh, and also to make sure that you're actually recording. Oh. <laughs> you always forget to record on he, camera. He is so right about that. He is so right. I can't argue with that. This is going to be my graphite pencil substitute today, this, this uh, pastel pencil. All right. So in Maria's uh, video that inspired me so... Uh, she started with uh, some uh, parallel lines that were not quite straight in her in her um, string or her border. Okay, so I'm just going to start right here, and I'm not going to worry just overly much about how straight they are. I do want to make them fairly good size apart because we're gonna be uh, dividing them and then drawing in the divisions. And so that's going to be, um, it's going to be a lot in a small space if you don't give yourself some room to work. Okay, so not all the same. Then what Maria did was she started with what she called some Charlie Brown action. <laughs> I always get a chuckle at some of the stuff that she says. I love it. So if you have ever seen the Charlie Brown cartoons, and I'm sure that a lot of people have, uh, this is the design that is on Charlie Brown's, woo, that one went crazy, Charlie Brown's shirt. Okay, so you're just going to make some zigzag lines, right? And they don't have to be perfect. And so on the sections next to them, to these, um, we're going to mirror this okay so we're gonna we're going to attempt to put our tips mirrored each other so if it helps you you can put a tiny dot there 
and that may um, may help you to aim right. Now in hers, Maria drew hers very organically and uh, that is good. I may be a little bit more. And, and by doing it this way, you're forming each triangle in an organic way instead of what I could have done, which was just draw up like this and cross the lines, right? So I like the idea of the organically drawn sections. Of course, I'm me and I'm all about the organic. Let's see right here. Okay. And if you're not sure about the angle, uh, except for this situation, look at it as if it is a line that is going through and continuing. And then you'll know that needs to go like that. Okay? In fact, that is a line going through, isn't it? Okay, so what am I doing? <laughs> not drawing straight, that's for sure. Okay, that's what I was forgetting. And we don't see that. All right, let's go up here and do the same thing. Well, again, pay attention to where you want your midpoint. Or you may get something very interesting like me. And it's, it's not going to matter. You're going to see it's not going to matter. Okay, so that's going to be like that. So my midpoint is there. Those dots really help me to aim right. But again, if you want, you can just draw these lines straight. <laughs> You're not gonna have quite this much fun with it though. That's just all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's all about the fun, guys. So that one's a little off, but it'll be all right. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a dot in the approximate middle of each one of these triangles, okay? Just like that. Uh, and if they're not in the middle, it's okay. You're going to see this is very relaxing and it always gives a lovely result. I need to come back on this. Trust this pattern to work. It's so simple. If it helps you more to draw these lines straight and make make just make a standard square grid. And that's that's all this is is a standard square grid. It's just done at an angle. Okay, okay. so once you've got a dot in each one of your triangle shapes, we're going to connect these dots to each corner with a straightish line. You know how I am about saying straight because mine rarely, rarely are. I think now maybe you're going to start to see the 3D nature of this. and start to maybe recognize some of the possibilities here. This is a great tangle simply shaded from this point shaded. You get a very 3D, uh, very sort of origami folded paper look. It's basically a star. Isn't that pretty? But don't leave. You're not done yet. And you shouldn't skip to the end. You should draw with me.
I'm not running any music right now. So put on your own music. Just sit down and draw the tile with me. It will do you good to have somebody to talk about tangling with. Even though I can't hear you, you can put your thoughts in comments. You know I love it when you do that. It makes me feel like I know you, which is Simba, Simba baby. Enough with the squirrels, buddy. Simba, Simba, wake up, buddy. <laughs> oh, Simba, I love you, bud. I love you. Hey, 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 bud. I can't do the jerking thing. It's okay. Simba. All right, we didn't get more snoring, so I'm in I am going to live in hope that that Simba is going to settle down a little bit now. Perhaps we have helped him catch his prey. Now you can see even though the triangles I had were weirdly shaped and off, I'm still getting an awesome result. One of the reasons to love this pattern. And if you haven't seen that kitchen table tangle, what you're about to see is going to amaze you. I love Rick and Maria's ideas. They are so creative. Now, I don't know what I did there, but it's going to be okay. Just keep hunting for those dots and, and connecting them to the corners. Okay. Um, so this is my triangle. So I would have, probably can't see that one, and this right here. All right. And I'm done now. I had to do some figuring out over there. drawing dude well sorry we got interrupted but we're back in business now and I'm still just connecting my center dots to the corners just like that so if this is one this will go up this way and this will go this way and in here, this will go straight down. And over here, no idea. So I'm going to leave it. <laughs> um, okay, so these are going to point in. If you're, if you're curious what you're supposed to do in these half or partial areas, you're mirroring the, the triangle next door. Okay, so whatever it is doing, you're going to do the mirror of that. So if we are going this way here with this one, then we're going to go opposite that here. Okay, does that sort of kind of not make sense at all? Yeah, I don't know either. I wish you guys could talk to me. I wish we could do like a, a Zoom class or something. That would be a lot of fun. But we have promised Mari that next Wednesday, if this video gets a hundred, how many likes do we have to get, Mar? A hundred and five. A hundred and five likes. If this video will get a hundred and five likes, then next week on Wednesday, when he gets home from school, uh, then we'll have a live stream and he will draw with me. So this is too good an opportunity for me to miss. So y'all make sure you get your likes on this video, okay? And I appreciate your, your support. I want him to draw with me. All right. What he really wants to do is answer comments, I, I suspect. Okay, so here is, this is the pattern hemp. Let me get this arranged a little bit better for you. Yes, this is better. So this is the pattern hemp. 
okay, in its pure form. Now, what Maria Thomas did in her Kitchen Table Tangle uh, is to use this as a reticulum for something else. And so what she did was she chose to put a fragment piece in each one of these triangles, okay? And here is what she did, something very, very simple. She drew a slightly curved line along each side of this triangle in each one. And then she fills this with a tucked in little orb and inks around it. And you will see this will create some meta patterns that are beautiful. So let's keep doing this. Let's do this one over here and just keep going on each side. Make a nice curved line Sometimes, depending on the size of your triangles, these are going to be smaller than others. If you don't have room, just tuck it in behind. Pretend like it can't be seen. They're not all going to be the same. Got distracted there, didn't I? I think for me, the best way is to draw along the long side first and then tuck the two short sides in with the orb last, of course. And over here, there's barely room. Can you even see? All right, so you can probably see better with that picture than me with my glasses. So, okay. Let's move on. Let's do this one next, okay? So, I'm gonna do my long side first. Try not to make it too fat. Then I'm gonna put in my other two sides. Tuck in my orb. And ink. It's going to be fun. Whoops. It's going to be fun to watch as the meta pattern unfolds here. Okay, long side first. And tuck the short sides in. Tuck in your little partial orb. Or your whole orb, however it turns out. <coughs> Move on to the next one. Uh, let's do this one since we're watching the meta pattern unfold. Yeah, I really think it helps to draw that long one first. All right. Don't worry about what's going on in the, in the areas next. Focus on each pen, pen stroke. Long curve, two shorter curves, tucked in orb. Like this. Long curve, two short curves. Take your time where you start and stop. That's where I tend to get the sloppiest results. 
Make sure you come in cleanly. Baby, I'm recording. Yeah, what are they? Well, those shouldn't be in the creek either, but that's fine. That's fine. Look at my jeans. Yeah, if you get them in the creek, they're going to be brown. Or gray, depending. They're a little tight on the sides, though. Well... You'll be all right for a couple of days. I said lit. That family moment was brought to you by Mari. <laughs> Are you packed? Yeah. Show me your stuff. I... What you got in there? Oh my goodness. All right, so that family moment was also brought to you by Mari. Mari and Mean Mom. It's really easy to lose um, some of your petals if you make this um, long one too big. Plus you lose your orb opportunity there. So you want to shoot for those to be as, as narrow as you can make them and still fill the space. If that doesn't help at all, I totally understand why. They need to be kind of medium and share the space as well as you can make it. But when you have some that are sort of, um, let's see, where's my example? This one is one, but I've got several in here that, that uh, aren't that aren't um, using the space as well as possible as it could be. Oops, like that one. Thank goodness I could work that out. That way I can fit everything else in up here. Okay, let's see.
Isn't this pretty? I think this is so lovely. And let's see. You can see the meta pattern though, right? Isn't that lovely? I just I just get a kick out of that every time I look at it. I know I'm easy to please, but that's okay. That's actually not a bad quality. As long as you're not settling. No settling for second best. I want you to do your best. Now, when it comes to if your best is good enough, your best is good enough. I'm telling you right now it is. I enjoy this kind of thing so much. It's so zenful. I think Maria called it a meditation or that this is a perfect tangle for a meditation. Fragments are almost always good for that because they're repetitious, of course. Duh. And while patterns are repetitious and tangles certainly are, certain ones just seem to fit the meditation uh, framework better than others. Don't you guys think? So I am curious, and I'm going to ask you enders a question since we're 17 minutes in, and so most, most people but you are gone. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. What was your, I want you to write in comments what your first Zen moment was with tangling and which tangle you were doing. Do you remember? I remember mine. I think I told you guys it was with Molygon and Betweed. Oh, <laughs> so cool. I, at that point, had really been struggling with Molygon. I could not get the the shapes consistent. Uh, I didn't understand about, um, I didn't understand about that aura. And I think I may have mentioned this before to you guys. And so, um, it was, it was struggle. And so what I did in the spaces between my Molygon spots where, where, um, I had too much, um, area there to fill. Uh, then I put in, um, I put in between between them and sort of connected it all with between and it came out really cool. But that was my first Zen, true Zen Tangle moment where I came to understand that I have told this before. So, so I'm curious, you guys put in comment when your first Zen moment was with tangling. Now you can get Zen moments with doodling, but there there definitely is a difference. Um, Zen Tangle follows a really uh, clear plan. There is there is method in the way that they do things. There is method in almost everything in that in the method. Um, they they make the choices that they have made, like the choice to to do the original Zen Tangle and stay in black and white. Uh, that choice was made to remove more uh, decision making from the drawing process so that it would be easier to find the Zen flow because you don't have to just worry about what color do I use and all of that. Now, of course, they have branched out seriously because people immediately saw the potential for other stuff uh, to go along with uh, the simple black and white tangling. And um, it's just become such a lovely art form. I think everyone should have heard of it by now, but they haven't. It's relatively, at least where I live, it's relatively unknown. So when I mention it, nobody gets excited. They're like, oh, yeah, okay. 
<laughs> All right. Now the shading and the highlighting on these box top or box backs are awesome. Because you can pull out both your pencil, your graphite pencil, and your white charcoal pencil. And if you have the chalk pastel types of pencils, then you, and you want to use those instead, you can. Now I think I mentioned yesterday there's a link to the to the kind that I bought on my Amazon store. I don't know if those are available everywhere. But I didn't find a whole lot of other things that were the same. Now that's not to say they're not out there. And I haven't done an extensive search, so, you know. I don't know what I'm doing over here. Making an extra mess, I guess. All right, so that is in my loop. All right, moving on. I love working in brown on these box backs. It is such a cool combination. And that is one reason why I'm thrilled uh, with my pastel pencils, uh, because I'm gonna be able to shade with them in very similar way to the graphite pencils. And I don't have to, and I can do it with, with a color shade that is going to be more consistent with what I'm doing as opposed to graying everything out. So I'm pretty excited about that opportunity. I think we showed um, yesterday when when uh, when I started shading my mucha with my white charcoal and my um, pastel pencils, I was amazed at how easily that happened, and how beautifully they blended. So I I am a big fan now of those. And so if you're looking for them, you can find that link, and you can see what exactly it is. And I got the 24 set, because of course, more colors, yay. And I think they may have, uh, they may have a 36 set, but um, maybe not. But there's, there's a decent range of colors here. And for tangling, we're really, we really only work on, on uh, three surfaces. We work on, primarily, we work on that off-white, cream, ivory type of thing. We work with tan in the background, like on the Renaissance tiles, or like we're doing uh, today. And we work with gray, did I say gray already? Oh, and we work with black as well. And so, um, with with the exception of black, which, oh, chalk pastels on black. Yay me. Sorry, that was an epiphanal moment. <laughs> yes, it was epiphanal. Anything about art supplies is definitely in the epiphanal um, category, for sure. Well, I would source myself some black soon. Cindy may want to play. 
Now I will probably, in that instance, probably use a Zentangle Apprentice tile in black. I like their smooth texture much more than the original ones in black. Uh, the original ones are very porous, and since we're using gel pens over, over the black surface so that they will show, um, I find that um, that porous surface the the absorbent surface that the that the original tiles in black have really make the ink uh, work for it and so you have lots of holes and stuff and of course um, um, NE has a, a great lesson on working in black and it was really hard for me because she made us work with the zero five I mean the little one you know the tiny one and uh, that was that was not easy, let me tell you. Uh, she said, you know, embrace that. I, I have trouble with that embracing. I like for, for my jelly roll to go on smoothly. And and uh, it's, it's not that it doesn't go on nicely, but it absorbs the ink into the paper and it makes the ink look less vibrant. Um, it's just not quite as, yeah. Of course, I haven't finished that lesson with any. So, you know, I may change my opinion about that, but but at least for now, that's how I feel about it. Of course, you guys always can form your own opinions. I celebrate that. I want you to know I don't know everything. I don't even know that much. <laughs> and the stuff I do know, I can't teach you. So for now, we're going to do the patterns, which I don't get in trouble for. And I'll just give you my tips here and there. If there's something you guys want to see, by the way, uh, I've had some, some uh, lovely suggestions for tangles, but unfortunately the, the step outs aren't on tangle patterns and I need that to be the case for um, pattern requests um, so that everyone has access to them, okay? Just take your time, slow down. Long side, short side, orb. The more time you take with this, the carefuler you are. When you get done, you're going to be amazed. And even if you have made mistakes, have stray lines, whatever, keep going. Finish it. I promise you. There, there are ways to help it, and if there aren't, you're still on the rest of it. It's going to be very cool. It is. It will be worth finishing. I guess that's my message. This will go this way. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday. Tomorrow's video is probably going to be pretty loud. The car traffic. 
But we're going to forge forth anyway. We won't have the kid interruptions. But we'll still have the puppy barking. Again, don't worry what's going on in the next place, in the next uh, sections. Just worry about each triangle. Fill in the long side, fill in the short sides, put in the orb. Next section, long side, short side, short side, orb. And don't rush. Take your time. This is going to be such fun when we're finished. I can bet that you guys are really relaxed. At least that is my hope, because that is my intention, is to relax and motivate and help you enjoy an hour of tangling and do it with a friend. That's me, by the way. I'm your friend. You guys have taken such good care of me during this project. I'm overwhelmingly grateful. Uh, so my next thing will be to get my taxes done. That may be, uh, that might make things better. I don't know. I have to play, pay self-employment tax and all that business this year. But on the happy side, I get to write off art supplies, so that's good. Oh my goodness. I don't want to be doing that. All that. It's too much work. All right, so I need to tuck an orb in this one. All right, let's do this one next. Trying to leave some room for the orb. Oh my gosh, I just looked at the whole thing. How gorgeous is this? I love this sort of star pattern that we got with these leaves. At least they're leaves for me now. Uh, of course, there's still a fragment. We're still just doing a curved line. Two smaller curved lines and tucking an orb in the rest. Let's not lose sight of what we're doing here. Curved line. Two short curved lines, orb. All right, just a few more. This is why I tell you not to worry too much about stray lines or mistakes, because trust me, when we're done, 
Nobody's going to be worried about stray lines. They're going to be wowed, wowed by this. And then you can tell them how easy it was. It was easy, wasn't it? You really don't have to do much thinking on this at all. At least, no, I, I don't know. Let's, let's not get crazy with that. Okay. And just like that, I figured out how that all works. Take your time. If you come into a section where you're not sure what to do, leave it and go back to it later okay oh that's a did i forget to do where did i forget here uh I guess I'll put an orb here and hope for the best. I have no idea what happened there or what's supposed to be happening in there. I know it's pointed the wrong way and all that, and I know the orb. Well, it's all right. We'll make it work. That We were supposed to have something. I think what happened is I didn't divide that triangle with the dot in the middle and doing all of that. And I think that's why we got a different result, but it's okay because the result is still gonna be fine. All right, so let's finish these off, starting with the one I know is complete. Orb. Okay. And then orb, uh, orb, curved lines, now orb, and now this one, curved line, and the tiny, teeny little orb, long curved line, short curved line, and orb and ink. Okay, so so this should be this should be a long curved line. This should be a short curved line, and this will be inked. So this will be the long curved line, or this will be the long curved line. I don't know, but either way, this is going to be inked, and then like this. And like this, that ought to work. That ought to work. Okay, now. I think I'm gonna go through to the middles of each of these and just put a little dot of ink in there. Uh, if I've got stray lines sticking out here and there, this will help. couple more and if they're really messy you might have to do more than one thing <laughs> you might have to make it bigger for the most part a small one will do and that's gonna be fun to dot with jelly roll here in a minute all right so uh, let's do, talk about some shading. Now, I'm going to use my um, my brown um, pastel pencil. And uh, what Maria did for hers is she ran a graphite pencil all around the edges. Now, she was working on ivory or original color, off-white. But by doing this, and I chose the brown because it's going to go with the ink color that I that I. I'm working with. This could just as easily be a rose pink with my pink pee in. It could be 
um, you know, blue with blue pen, whatever you've got color-wise, this will work with, okay? Now, on the tan background of boxes, um, this browns are a really good choice, but you may have a different color and may want to try something else, and so do that if that's what you want. So Maria put some color around the edges, like this, and really darkened those so that they would sort of pillow up when we, when we do our uh, blending. Yeah, and then here, I think I'm gonna run along the outside of this. And we'll see, we'll see what happens when I blend, okay? And then the next place I think I wanna do is around these centers. I just wanna touch in a bit around here. Pretty stuff, pretty stuff. All right. Let's, let's see. Let's get the tortillon out or I will use a paper stump for this. I like the paper stumps better on cardboard because they seem to move the graphite just a little easier. But uh, let me find that real quickly. So this looks like it has blue on it, but I've wiped it off and so it shouldn't cause a problem. So I'm gonna start around the edges and I'm just going to blend this in just like I would a, a, a pencil, just as I would graphite. Now, it may be that I feel like this isn't dark enough and I need to come back in and I can still use my graphite pencil if that's what I want to do. But I really wanted to preserve the brown tones in this. I'm just gonna try to keep this blended out so there are not any uh, circle lines, if you will. I don't wanna blend it up too far because I'm gonna use some highlighting just like we did yesterday. But uh, conceptually, what we're gonna be doing today is the same. We're going to be darkening the centers of these and then putting our highlighting uh, on the petals between. These pastel pencils are highly blendable, but they will also transfer off onto other things really quickly. So um, I think we talked, I can't remember, did I talk you, to you guys about a spray-on fixative, um, a workable fixative? It's a spray that you can get in the paint section of your store. And uh, I think the brand that I use is called Krylon here in the US, but whatever brand, of uh, like spray on paint and things like that that you have. That's probably the brand that will do it. Um, the Krylon, what the spray on fixative does is it allows, it keeps like things like the pastels or the charcoal pencil or whatever from uh, lifting off your paper or your graphite pencil, but it allows you to come in and do more, add more, uh, still erase, whatever, you can do that still. So it's a really great thing. It just has a, has a bad smell. It has to be put on outside or someplace with great ventilation. You don't wanna do it around your pets uh, for sure. Uh, so, so I find I don't use it nearly as much as I should be, and which of course means that when I get uh, pieces of art out, I have to go back over the work that I've done, darkening, shading, or whatever it happens to be. And so, yeah, look at how beautiful this is. Now, uh, let's get that charcoal, that white charcoal out and give that a go. I think we're gonna love the results. There we go. 
I dropped mine. <laughs> of course I did. All right. So where these connect the flower petals. Yeah. Now I'm going to call them flower petals because that's what they want. But it's we're talking about the meta pattern. These sections that, that connect these meta patterns. You just want to brighten those up just a little bit. Now, if it's in the shadows, it's in the shadows, so it doesn't need a highlight. And by doing this, we have further enhanced this meta pattern. Yeah, look at that. Wow, wow, wow. That looks amazing. And on camera, it looks even brighter than it looks um, to me uh, under these lights. So I'm, I'm really excited to get some pictures of this. Now I may get out my Burnt Sienna uh, pastel pencil and uh, do some blending with the brown and and the the charcoal we're gonna see how this looks here first and these will need to be blended in with the brown whatever I decide to do I will also be uh, shading the orbs that are big enough to allow me to do that. We'll be dotting some jelly roll in on those. God, I love these pencils. This is just my charcoal pencil too. It's just a joy to put on. It just smooths on so nice. Nicely. I know, Grammar Police. I'm listening. So I've got something. I didn't do the other side of this one, I think. That's what I missed there. It's funny what what different, working on different parts of it from different perspective will will make you notice about your work, which is one reason why it's it's good to shade. I said yesterday this is a labor of layers here and you have to be willing to spend the time I mean you could skip the shading and just uh, slap some of this charcoal on there and it wouldn't be ugly at all but how much better is it gonna be like this just saying just saying I'm not gonna sing I promise Mari's in there going thank God things he has to tolerate is just immense. Oh, I went too far on this, didn't I? Layers, sending layers. You probably got 10 minutes, honey. Make sure your shoes are on and you're ready to go. Yes. Mar. Leslie. 
She'll be here in about 10 minutes, so make sure your shoes are on and you're ready to go. Make sure you've got a hoodie or something to take with you in case it gets chilly. 10 minutes ago, uh, she told me that she's coming. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Good deal. What are you wearing? I have to put on some uh, shorts. Why? What what kind of temperature do we have outside? Is it shorts weather? Or is it jeans weather? I know you don't have any sweatpants. They're all dirty. It is 57. Well, okay, but do you have jeans in your pack? Mm, yeah. Long pants, you do? More than one pair? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So where is that tortillon? Right here. Hey. Or do, yes, but do they fit you? Yes. They're not the orange ones, are they? No. Cool. All right. Good deal. How many pairs of uh, pants do you have? Mm-hmm. How many shirts? Mm -hmm. How many shirts do you have? A lot. Wow. Thanks so much, honey. So glad I let you watch YouTube. You got your phone and your charger? So if you run your tortillon over these, then then uh, the places where you might have sharp edges can just be blended right out. And there you have it. I think that is gorgeous. I love it. Okay, guys. Uh, the only thing left that I'm going to do is put Jelly Roll on my orbs, and if they're bigger orbs, then I'm going to do a little contouring, but I'm gonna go through and hit my little orbs first. That one I will add some contouring to. I'll also put some in the middle of these flower patterns. And this is why it doesn't matter if you've got stray lines. Nobody's going to be looking at a stray line here. Trust me on this. They are going to be looking at this and going, oh my God, that's so gorgeous. Or something similar. 
Beautiful, lovely, pretty, cool. And all you had to do is fill some triangles with the same thing over and over. Isn't Zentangle awesome? Okay, just a few more. These are the times when you can kind of go crazy with your jelly roll. These are the times you want your number 10. And without a bit of work here, we have taken it from awesome to, oh my God, wow. Yes, yes. Now what do you think? Pretty cool, yeah. All right, guys. This is where I'm going to leave you today. Mari says next Wednesday, if this video gets 105 likes, then we are going to do a live stream when he comes home from school. So uh, let me know how you like this with a thumbs up. Yep, give me a thumbs up. Especially if it has jelly roll on it. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah? And then uh, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Okay, guys, thanks for being with me today, and I'm going to see you tomorrow for day 36. I'm fairly certain that it's 36. Bye.